Greetings fellow Ardbegians. I'm Dr. Bill, mighty whiskey wizard, chief Ardbeg alchemist, drinker of many drams, an omnipotent conjurer of casks. And I'm joined by my sage advisor, Gillian MacDonald. From the shadowy heights of my wizard's tower, explore with us the layers of flavour in this extraordinary dram and hear for yourself the origin story of the mythical Ardbeg Scorch. The board is set. The pieces are moving. Let's begin. Let's get going. So, Gillian, you know, we've been chanting incantations. That's a difficult phrase to master. Chanting incantations. We've been mixing potions together. We've been tasting all sorts of samples. And here we are, finally ready to release Scorch on an unsuspecting public. Very exciting. I'm yeah. absolutely thrilled to be here and I'm waiting with bated breath to get stuck into the whiskies. You know, what fun we've had with this one. And you know, the use of these ultra heavily charred, you know, brutally charred casks has given us an absolutely astonishing whisky. And what I love about this, Gillian, is as well as this intensity, you know, there's that classic juxtaposition in there. There's a bit of a surprise in there as well. And we're going to discover that when we come to Taste Scorch. Marvellous. We'll save that till the very end. And we'll start, first of all, with our big 10-year-old, the flag bearer for the committee. It so uh, I think we should start with that. And we all know about the, the high phenol levels in uh, our bag and the, the really intense peat flavour. But what else can we detect in here as we dip our noses in? Are you, it, we love doing this, Gillian, and we do this regularly in our lab as well. We calibrate our palates with Ardbeg 10-year-old just to give us a feel for other varieties we are creating, how different they are. So as Gillian said, this is the flagship expression of the whole Ardbeg range. They've always bottled a 10-year-old for as long as I can remember. And it's an expression we released way back in about the year 2000. And as you say, Gillian, very heavy uh, peating level on the malted barley, but at full strength, my goodness, you could be forgiven for thinking, where's the peat? Exactly. Where's it gone? No, I can get that as well. There's an awful lot of fruit in there. So how do we get that balance then? What is it that you would uh, describe to the audience out there that we managed to get the balance of the peat with the, with the fruit as well? You know, there, there's lots of different things going on here. Lots of interesting technical geekery. <laughs> so to start off with, you know, the phenolic compounds from the peat have a relatively high odour threshold, which means... You, know, you don't necessarily pick them up in the nose. They do, however, have a low flavour threshold. So just wait till you taste it. But I think what you're actually alluding to, Gillian, is the magical purifier on the line arm of the spirit still. And this incredible little device, and you know we know it because we're there often, but this unassuming little <laughs> pot does so much to the complexity of Ardbeg. It is, of course, the only distillery on the island of Isla to have a purifier, mm -hmm. and it is just this magical final ingredient which gives complexity to the whiskey. So it's the redistillation, reflux. Mm -hmm. You know, not this type of reflux <laughs> if you've had too big a steak to eat, but you know, the, the redistillation, and it brings forth some of these herbal and fruity flavours. Mm -hmm. And I just get that in the nose. And you know, we, we had the good fortune to watch Sir Colin and Lady Blackmore in action <laughs> earlier. And they were talking about this almost lime juice type yeah. thing. And I can get that in abundance yeah, in the 10 year old. Lime. The lemon and lime is definitely there without, <laughs> without a doubt. You can't, can't disguise it. And, uh, and again, the cast choice for the maturation here, again, is allowing that to shine through the distillery character not oh, overpowering it. Absolutely. We've gone with classic 100% American Oak X bourbon mm -hmm. barrels. And I remember way back when we first bought the Ardbeg distillery in 1997, the whiskey writer Jim Murray trying to sort of suggest to me that we should be using only X bourbon barrels. And I understand why he said that, because it does allow a lot more of the individual house character, mm -hmm. you know, the unique DNA, yeah. if you like the terroir. 
to shine through. You knew what I was going to I say. Was, I can indeed. second I could guess me. Wow. Out of your mouth. <laughs> and of course, we love using our sherry casts and other different types of casts. Mm -hmm. But for this, the classic Purard bag, 100% ex bourbon, we yeah. think is the way to go. So okay. I'm just going to add a couple of little drops of water. Yeah, I'll do the same. Let's see what else we can coax out here. And it, it's staggeringly yeah. perfumed. And you know, a lot of people just do not expect this no. from an Isla whiskey. I certainly didn't. And I'm happy to admit, before I knew the Ardbeg whiskey, I was a little bit skeptical and I thought, oh, here we go again. I'm just going to get slapped in the face with a big peat monster. Well, this is it. And I think that's a lot of it sometimes is the expectation of what's <sighs> to come. Whereas actually, there's an awful lot in there. There's many layers of complexity Ooh. within that. And there's, I, I mean, I'm p certainly picking up sort of espresso coffee in there and dark chocolate yeah. as well. I mean, that's always something that leaps out to me. I mean, it's like old fashioned fries chocolate cream, which of mm -hmm. course you won't remember because you're so much younger than me, Gillian. And it's these <laughs> lovely layers of sort of herbal flavors, yeah. the pine resin, mm. the lime. Yeah. Should we taste? We should indeed. Mm. You know, there we go. You know, I don't mind being slapped in the face from time to time, and it does happen more often than you would than you would care to believe. Um, but it's just you know, after that beguiling introduction, all mm -hmm. these different layers, boom. When you taste it, there's no question. There's a bit of peat in there. A little bit of peat. It's almost an explosion, isn't it? And it's there's, um, but there's also this sweetness in there as well. And we also get quite a lot of feedback about that, but. People often say, oh, it's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be mm. based on what they've detected on the nose. Yeah. And a lot of people are won over it's, by the sweetness. So, And it's one of these things, Gillian, yeah. that a lot of people ask me, Bill, where does where it, does it come, come from? from? Yeah. And, you know, I have many theories, <laughs> but I don't have a definitive answer. Yeah. But on the tasting notes, we've said it's like a toffee and chocolate sweetness. Mm -hmm. And you get a hint of that lovely biscuity, malty, malted barley base mm. in there. It's absolutely delicious. I mean, it's it's amazing. And we obviously compare this. Um, this is our standard, our benchmark. And we obviously work with this then when we're developing new products for either introduction to the core range or even the Arbeg days as well. So we're, we always start here. It's just, it, it's wonderful. You know, we are scientists by training way back in the day. And it's always good to have a control yeah. in your experiments. And this is it for us. The beautiful, amazing, wonderful Ardbeg 10-year-old. Oh, no, it's a shame so, to put it down. It is a shame <laughs> to put it down. However, perhaps we can come back to it later. Indeed we may. So what should we try next? So we're going to mosey on to a wee beastie next. So this, for the Ardbeg fans, is the closest they can get to the stills. So um, far. So far, indeed. So what I'd like to ask you on this one is sort of describe the experience of nosing the Ardbeg new make because this is the closest we get to it so give me the descriptions of when you're nosing that yeah. what what you can detect and then go into maybe how this differs yeah. so you know it, a, a few people have the extreme privilege of being at the distillery and having the spirit safe opened and you can actually get these aromas from the raw new spirit as it flows into mm -hmm. the safe and as you said, Gillian, it's like we're going backwards in the journey from the 10-year-old down to the five-year-old mm -hmm. wee beastie. And, you know, when I nose the new make, we get this, you get gristy, cereally notes. Of course you do. But you get these almost sort of eucalyptus and peppermint top notes. You've got a lot of tar and leather and mm -hmm. maybe even a bit of saddle soap in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've tried to capture in the wee beastie. So, um... I suppose, how did we manage to make it something that was almost wanting, you know, drawing you in and, pa yeah. and palatable because it is only five years old. Yeah. So, you know, we had to make it something that was also possible to drink. So do you want to talk us through the combination of casts and how we manage that? Uh, of course. And maybe I can reminisce a little bit. Mm -hmm. And for fun, many, many years ago, just after we had released Ardbeg Ugadal, we released a fun little offering called the Oogling, the baby Oogadal, as it were. And this was a very, very, very young Ardbeg. And, you know, it wasn't 100% serious. 
It was partly a bit of fun, mm -hmm. but it was also to let our loyal Ardbegians know that the whisky we were creating, you know, after we bought the company in 1997, was as good, if not better, than the classic Ardbeg they knew and loved. And I didn't for one second think that the oogling would reach the cult status it mm -hmm. actually got. So if you like, in some respects, I thought, well, if we can do that, if people love that, why don't we actually do a younger offering and put the age statement loud and proud on it? Mm -hmm. And you've already beautifully described how we've tried to draw people as close to the spirit safe as we are currently prepared to go. <laughs> Indeed. But, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a very politician's answer here. <laughs> That's not what you asked me. You asked me what, would, what did we do to make it a little bit mm -hmm. more palatable. So it's this incredible combination, of course, of classic Ardbeg X bourbon barrels yeah. and a little bit of the, the, the cheeky little PX in there, the Pedro Jimenez sherry cast, just to sweeten it up. And of course, you were part of the team, Gillian, that developed this. And while we personally liked classic Ardbeg, wee beastie five-year-old, just from bourbon barrels, we felt that the sherry cast just gave that a little bit of softness and a bit of extra complexity. Certainly, and you can definitely get the classic notes on there, but it has been softened and the edge has been taken off, as you said, by the sweetness of those sherry casts. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly... You can certainly see, though, that it's close to that raw, that raw spirit that we know is on a, yeah. a weekly basis when we get it from the distillery. You know, I've just gone back to my 10-year-old there, and mm -hmm. compared to that, the wee beastie, you know, there's that lovely, almost kind of molasses, treacly, yeah. almost yeasty type thing going on there. Yeah. A, a little bit of deep, deep antique leather. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a tiny bit more spice in this as well. I would say there's quite a bit more spice indeed. Mm -hmm. So, another little splash of water. We get oh those my tarry goodness. ropes, yeah, yeah. tarry, tarry rope. rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Tarry rope, soot, tar, bonfires on the yeah. beach, bonfire embers. Okay, time for a sip. Mm -hmm. I was a bit ahead of you there. <laughs> Couldn't resist it. You know, the first thing I always find, and you know, this is the way I always judge whiskies, mm -hmm. whether I'm drinking in the laboratory professionally, whether I'm doing it in a competition judging, or even in my own home with friends mm -hmm. for pleasure. I always look for the texture as well as the flavour. Mm -hmm. And because, because all of our art bags, of course, are non-chill filtered, you always get that incredible mouth coating texture. Yeah. And it's something I now look for, not just in our whiskies, but any whiskies. I like that texture mm -hmm. because when you drink fabulous single malt scotch, it should be a total sensory experience. Yeah. You should get the colour, you should get the aroma, you should get the flavour, of course. But I like to think you get the texture as well. And that's what I love in this, in this wee beastie. And look, you can see mm -hmm. it just going ever so slightly yeah, opaque. Pink, yeah. And that's all this lovely oily goodness coming mm -hmm. out of solution. Definitely. And you can almost chew the peat, can't you, at yeah. the end as well. It just lingers for yeah. so long. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> sometimes some of our colleagues raise an eyebrow when you see this chewiness. Chewy, yeah. But I totally yeah. get that. And I love to think of the fact that you're not, you don't, just drink Ardbeg. Sometimes it's almost like you're eating it. It's a meal in <laughs> itself. I'm going to try a second sip. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, glorious. And there's definitely yeah, there's there's, the, there's a bit more cinnamon spice in there as well. Old-fashioned boiled, boiled sweet sweets, yeah. cinnamon balls, yeah. aniseed yeah. twists, things like yeah. that. I'm really showing my age here again. <laughs> Jillian's thinking, in what? a confectionery <laughs> shop, yes. No, it's amazing. But and you know. What it says on the packaging is true. This really is a beast of a dram, but we believe we've offered something that in spite of its incredible youthfulness has a bit of finesse and a bit of soothing, that, that soothing sensation. Yeah. And of course, that's reflected in the fact that it's become so popular. To th thank you to all you Ardbegians out there for making Wee Beastie such a great success. Exactly. Well, you can see why. I mean, it's just a beautiful dram and it just is, it, it shows the essence mm. of what our beg is and really does let the, let the spirit shine through. So, so. So, so, so. Yes. <laughs> the main event, Scorch. 
So why did why would we call it that? Why would we call it Scorch? I don't know. Any clues? Well, <laughs> of course, yes. So the the casks for this, you, you know, um, the cask gives so much character to single malt Scotch whisky, and because the spirit from the Ardbeg distillery is so raw and so peaty and so powerful, it often needs a variety of casks just to tame that, you know, that intensity, that fierceness in there. And if we use, for example, the Oloroso Sherry cask we use for Ugadal, or if we use the new French oak we use for Corrie Vrecken, it just reigns that intensity mm -hmm. in. But with this, we've kind of gone the opposite way. So these are the most ultra heavily charred, fired casks we could find. They've had a brutal heat treatment. And as well as giving an incredible colour to the whisky, mm -hmm. and you know, you can see that in the scorch compared to the 10 year old, this is the impact of the scorching of these casks. I think we refer to them tongue in cheek as dragon charred casks. As well as giving that, it's given a huge burst of flavour. So when we dive in, not literally, that would make a bit of a mess that of the would table make here. A mess. But certainly this year we are. Back with a bang, I would say. There's no hiding from this one at all. Have a and little. My goodness, it's, this is this juxtaposition mm -hmm. I was talking about. It's so fragrant. Yeah. I mean, it's positively perfumed. And this may sound a little bit silly. It may be me yet again revealing my age here. But back in the day of my clubland days where I strutted my funky stuff in my goodness. finery, <laughs> reeking of aftershave, one of the brands I wore was Givenchy Gentleman. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, that expression had this incredible patchouli top note. And right. that's what I'm getting here. So for all of you aging hippies out there, you'll know what I mean by patchouli. And I get that beautifully on the top note. It's so fragrant and it, it's quite astonishing. It is. Because we believed, Gillian, when we used these casts that it would dominate mm -hmm. over anything else. But in fact, it's almost brought out more of the perfumed top note. And the other thing, well, certainly I can get an awful lot of antiseptic. It's sort of layered in yeah. there. It's almost like fisherman friends, Fisherman's antiseptic, friends, yeah. lozenges. Perfect uh, if you're... Uh, a I think we're going to find even more of that when we taste yeah. it. But I, I, I'm just reveling in the incredible aromas. So once again, a little splash oh of water just to coax out the aroma, you know, release the serpent, as we say. And there it is, classic Ardbeg, mm -hmm. fennel, pine resin, yeah. lime juice top note. Yeah. And that's what I always look for if I'm doing a blind tasting. That's, to me, the classic marker of Ardbeg. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the island of Isla makes some fabulous whiskies. And I'm talking about our Laphroaigs, our Lagavulins, our Bunnahavans, our Beaumores. But this is what always sets Ardbeg aside for me. Yeah. It's this incredible complexity and this herbal top note. I genuinely think this is the first time that you and I have ever used patchouli in our tasting notes. It certainly did, and it certainly came from you, that one. <laughs> um, so the, specific, the, the, the actual charring part of the cast then, so the actual char, I mean, there's chunks of char practically floating around in this whiskey. Um, but can you give me a bit more of a description of the influence that that has had on this mm. and the particular flavours yeah. there? So, of course, I, I, as you know, Gillian, if you make a barrel out of oak wood and don't do anything to it, it will perfectly happily hold your spirit for many, many years. But you won't get much of the wood extractives unless you heat treat mm -hmm. it. So, you know, you can give it a very gentle toast, as people would do in the wine industry. Yeah. You can give it a nice heavy toast, particularly if you want to add a bit more colour, a bit more tannin to mm -hmm. it. You can char it as you would do for a classic ex-bourbon barrel, which gives, as, as well as the nice colour, some of your classics of vanilla yeah. flavours to it. But what we've done here is we, we've burnt the hell out of it. We've really gone for Super it this charred, time. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's... What would normally the heaviest char you would get from your cooperage would be what's known as a grade five. Mm -hmm. But as you, as you said, we went way beyond this to the extent that chunks of the charcoal were actually coming off and into the whiskey. Mm -hmm. And so we've got such 
a big powerful influence in there and it's given all these lovely aromas and flavors you know it's almost like sort of smoked meats mm -hmm. and you know that the, these lovely licorice and yeah. tar and aniseed type flavors and again the color as well has yeah. been intensified by that char and, and of course access to the wood yeah 100 percent natural yeah i think jillian we should really taste this now let's go for it I was just having a moment there. Oh, I mean, this is just staggeringly richly flavoured. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's not as brutal as you would expect no. because there's balancing mm -hmm. flavours in there. There's the savoury notes of the charcoaly, tarry notes, but there's actually a balancing sweetness yeah. in there. And there's almost things like briar, wood and sage. Yeah, no, I'm getting that. And there's that vanilla as well you can mm. taste in there as well. But yeah, there is there is quite a lot of sweetness. Again, that back to that surprise that most people have when they when they um, take our big is it's amazing. But yes, it certainly packs a punch. There's no hiding from this. And in the past, we've done various things with the castle on previous our big days, um, which people have had their comments on. And uh, but certainly with this, I think we've gone uh, back to the to the hardcore. I, I, I think th th this, this this is an extremely hardcore yeah. hard bag. Yeah, exactly. So and you know it, it's I just can't go over the fact that as well as the intensity, there's a bit of finesse in mm -hmm. there. And you know you know me, Gillian. I love to take my time and sip and savor my whiskies. And if yeah. you do that. You're rewarded with all these different layers of yeah. flavour coming through there. So, I, you know, you, you said we get comments about it. We will always get comments about our Ardbeg whiskies, And that, that's part of the beauty of what we do. We are trying to offer different aspects of the personality of Ardbeg. We're trying to generate a little bit of debate, a little bit of controversy in there. But as Gillian said, I think we've almost gone back to basics and really given a big, chewy, heavy Ardbeg with this Ardbeg Scorch. No, definitely. And if you uh, compare it back to the 10, it almost makes 10 seem uh, very delicate. Yeah. It has, it has an elegance to it. And, you know, yeah. I wouldn't normally use the E word <laughs> it, it with, along with Ardbeg, but yeah. it's in there compared to this absolute beast of a dram. Yeah. And even if I go to the legendary wee beastie, I, I actually think that the Scorch packs an even bigger, bigger punch. punch than yeah, that. I'd agree with that, definitely. It's certainly uh, certainly no, no holes barred mm. in your face. As you mentioned earlier on, it's a bit of a smack around the face with a sort of an oily, Ooh. chewy rag. But you know, <laughs> I don't mind being slapped around the face with something like that. I can no. go for that. No, certainly. So, Ard Beg Scorch. So mm. that, that is our offering for this year's Ard Beg Day. And you know, as Gillian will testify, it takes us a long time before we're actually ready to release these things on a, a, an unexpected audience out there. But we, we are happy with what we've done. I think we are always our own biggest critics and you can never rest in your laurels. You're always trying to make something that's even more exciting and more different each year. But you know, th this is one where I think you and I probably had a little smile when this yes. was bottled. Oh no, definitely. I mean, that's, our, that's the aim is obviously to try to give offer up something different every year, something that's pushing the boundaries, um, but keeping it within the, the house style that people will, will love and recognise as well. So I think we're going to take some comments and um, questions now from the Arbeg fans out there. So the first question, probably a little predictable one, but which is your favourite Arbeg Day bottling? Okay, that, that, that's always such a tricky question to answer. I, you know, I love so many of the offerings for many, many different mm -hmm. reasons. And not just because of the taste profile, sometimes how difficult they were to get hold of the casks, yeah. how difficult the experiments were to carry out at the distillery. But I have to say, probably my all-time favourite was Ardbeg Alligator. And, you know, I, I loved everything about that mm -hmm. project. And I mean, even right down to some of the ridiculous ideas we had about having the bottles 
um, presented in alligator skin boxes. <laughs> I mean, that probably not going to be um, really practical to do that, but just the whole thing and the unexpected nature of the whiskey. Mm -hmm. And what I vivid re vividly remember about Ardbeg Alligator was the number of people who had told me they hated peaty whiskey, mm -hmm. but actually opened their eyes when they tasted Ardbeg Alligator. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's quite interesting because there is a kind of link between my favourite Ardbeg Alligator and what we're tasting today. I'll say no more about that. Our lips are sealed, mm. of course. Um, yeah, so our second question is, was Scorch finished or fully matured in heavily charred casks? And that's from Stuart Carr. Yeah, well, Stuart, um, I, I can reveal that these were fully matured. So from day one, as new make spirit, mm -hmm. All these many, many years ago, um, so wholly matured. And that's what amazes me so much and amazed you, Julian, that I thought a full maturation uh, for that length of time in these casts, it would be utterly brutal, but it does have mm. finesse. So no, not finished, fully matured. Excellent, good, good. And we've got a question now from Dale Hansom. So greetings from Miami. It's probably as hot as we are. Uh, Florida, he says, would you consider releasing an Ardbeg three-year-old and a day, a three years and a day old car strength refill ex bourbon barrel in the future? Very specific. Right. It's his dream dram, apparently. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, I cannot say for certainty, Dale. You know, you, you obviously know from what we said earlier that the Ardbeg oogling, it was three years yeah. and a few months, but that was from Olor uh, Oloroso Sherry Cask. Um, let, let's just say I very much hear what you're saying. Gillian and I will take this in. We will think <laughs> about it. We'll consider it. But thus far, the wee beastie is about as far as we've pushed it. But, you know, very much noted. Indeed. And um, so Isla, we wish we could be there now. Many a day have we uh, spent on the island. <laughs> Um, and a couple of our big days themselves have been absolutely phenomenal. So what is your favourite Isla memory? Yep. And keep it... Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so not that type of memory, OK. That... Um, so many stories from my many, many trips to Isla, n not just in my uh, Glenmorangie company days, but also in my, my Diageo days before that. But I think my all-time favourite memory was when we welcomed uh, Monsignor uh, uh, Prince Albert of Monaco over to the island and he came to the island and cycled around the island and visited all of the distilleries on Isla and he started off at the Ardbeg distillery because we'd worked with him for, for a charity mm -hmm. project and he was a little bit late his helicopter getting into Ireland because of the bad weather and he turned up ready for action with a uh, tracky pants an old skanky cagoule, and that was, he was dressed for the weather. And I took him into the old kiln cafe in Ardbeg, which was packed full of people at the time. This was kind of about 11 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I took him in, and customers in the cafe, one by one, turned round, and they realised who was standing there. Mm -hmm. And I swear at least two of them said, hey, isn't that... Bill Lumsden? No, they, they didn't say that. They said they realised that it was Prince Albert. So that's probably my favourite, one of my favourite memories. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's a true story. Many of my stories aren't, but that one is. That one's to the core. True. Excellent. Good stuff. Well, certainly my favourite memory um, has got to be our big day uh, grew. So 2018, purely because of the theme and back to what you mentioned about yeah. uh, when you mentioned Alligator. Um, you know, the sort of the full encapsulation of the the story that went along with the whiskey and it really did the whole peat and love theme and everything like that so the memories of that day certainly will live long in my memory and just the being on isla is such a special experience isn't it the the people there are so welcoming and, the, and when you're at our big distillery itself it's just you get this buzz you get this vibe which is just so welcoming so amazing definitely uh, and you've just kind of touched on something there that it's wonderful the role we play because not only do we work on creating the whiskies but we get to work alongside the wonderful Ardbeg brand team, work with the agency, the story and work with the distillery team and that's where a lot yeah. of these ideas and these themes come from. And, you know, it's such good fun to yeah, do that. Yeah, it is definitely. So another question here then, uh, 
Would Arbeg ever consider having their own maltings in the future? It, the simple answer to that is yes, we would and have done. Um, it, it's one of these things that we, we are constantly considering and, you know, th there, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Of course, given the popularity of Ardbeg single malt these days, the floor, if we reinstated the maltings, it could only ever supply a small proportion of the overall distillery's needs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, it, it, it's one of these things that Gillian and I would dearly love to do. So um, I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, it's not off the table. But, you know, one of these days, perhaps... It may well happen, yeah. indeed. Well, it would certainly give us a bit more scope to play, it which is always would. something that we're, we're interested in doing. So the next question is about our big 25-year-old. Um, somebody's uh, asked the question. They're looking forward to trying it someday. So they clearly haven't tried it yeah. yet. What would, you, what would you like to tell us about our big 25? Well, the first thing I will say about Ardbeg 25-year-old, mm -hmm. and I can say this quite categorically, it is 15 years older than the 10-year-old. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm hopeless at maths and counting. <laughs> you know, but seriously, the offering we have there exhibits a completely different side of mm -hmm. Ardbeg. And, you know, the long ageing and the, the, the bourbon barrels, it, the, the, the phenolic compounds die down yeah. during the maturation. And, of course, you get more wood extractives. Mm -hmm. So the 25-year-old is a beautifully subtle, elegant form of Ardbeg. And, you know, the peat smoke is still there, mm -hmm. but it's very much restrained. And, you know, there's no question, it is absolutely one of my favourites. And when we were putting it together, the cask selection, Gillian, you know, there was more than a nod and a wink to the old Ardbeg 25-year-old yeah. Lord of the Isles. So anyone who's lucky enough to try that is in for a total treat. Yeah, it's a cracking, it's a cracking jam. So we've got a couple of comments here as well. So these people must be mm. some of your biggest fans, mm -hmm. I think, Bill. We've got specific hellos coming in here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from, from Kyoto. <laughs> yeah, so, from, from yes. Kyoto. Kompangwa. There we go. And who's that? Albez says hello Christoph from Hamburg. Christoph from Hamburg. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Have you not got any German? I, I've got a little bit. <laughs> OK. And now we're back onto questions. So Alistair Ford is asking, are there any plans for a cast strength version of Anno? I mean, uh, when we create our Ardbeg whiskies, mm. you know, we, are all, we taste them at many, many different strengths. Yeah. And we will generally recommend bottling them at the strength that we think you get the best and most impactful flavour. So that's why we choose the various different mm -hmm. strengths. They're, they're not just plucked randomly out of the air. So, you know, at the moment, no. But, you know, nothing's impossible. So, you know, we, we, it's highly possible that in the future there could be variants of a no or of 10-year-old. We, we just don't know. Okay. And Stuart Carr would like to know how many times do Arbeg reuse their cast? So I assume that's in relation to the core range, realistically, and 10-year-old, maybe. Uh, okay, so, so obviously our, our cask policy is confidential. Mm -hmm. But what I would say that when we've got our, our wizard's capes and things <laughs> off and we've got our Glenmorangie heads on, it's well known that we use the cask two times. Mm -hmm. For Ardbeg, it's a different kettle of fish entirely because there's so much influence of the flavour from the raw spirit yeah. in there. So we would on occasions use the cask maybe three times. But, you know, we, we, we seldom use them much more than that. And, of course, for the sherry cask, my personal favourite sherry cask for Ardbeg is a refill sherry, in other words, a second fill. So, you know, the, the simple answer is two to three times would be the rule of thumb for Ardbeg. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And what do you think of the 1977 Ardbeg? Now, now, whoever asked me this question obviously knows a little bit about myself because the 1977 Ardbeg is well documented as being my favourite Ardbeg expression of all time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not because anything particularly magical happened in 1977. Mm -hmm. I think I was almost expelled from school. I was still at school in these days. But it's just the fact that this expression had this incredible, lovely, creamy, fudgy character. And I just thought it was one of the most beautiful, complex Ardbegs. 
And sad to say, I am now down to, I think, my last two or three bottles in my own personal collection. But you know, what fun I've had enjoying these mm. and sharing them with friends. Well, this is it, and we always want people to share them. We don't want Absolutely. people just to buy them and keep them. We yeah. want people to drink them. We spend an awful lot of time was, and effort. Was that a hint from you there, Gillian? That I, I want to be invited to House of 77, please, Noted. Bill. Very yes. much noted. Excellent. So we've got Oliver Krauss now would like to know, what's the difference between the main release and the committee release okay. for Scorch? Yep. It's a good question, and people always ask this. And, you know, essentially the whiskies are the same, mm -hmm. but you know, we, we offer our friends in the committee a different version and it's generally bottled at a different strength. But you know, whether you're buying the main release or the committee release, we can guarantee you're getting the same fantastic flavour. So it's essentially down to a different strength. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's great that the committee get to try it and it almost sort of casts strength. And that's obviously how we do our approvals and they come yeah. in as well we were start mm. off really high and then yeah. and then bring it down so david blackmore has got a sneaky question here mm. now i'm so, worried already exactly uh, would you like to know what our big he should pay with a texas barbecue yep i, I mean i think that's um quite a straightforward answer to that david and guess what it would be either ardbeg alligator or Ardbeg Scorch, and I really do think these are the two which would most beautifully pair with whatever you go, you're going to cook in your whopping great Texas-style grill. Excellent, that's good, David. Enjoy your grill when you get round to it. Um, so we've got another one now from Yvonne, and she would like to know if Blaster will ever come back. So it's a bit of a blast from the past there. Um, okay, so, so Blaster per se is probably not going to come back because when we release these products, they're released as limited expressions mm -hmm. on the understanding that once they're gone, they're gone. So they're really quite exclusive. However, it's not impossible to imagine that that style of Ardbeg, you know, much, much more lightly peated or unpeated style could come back. So, you know, it, we, we just don't know. Gillian and I and the team, we're working on many, many different expressions at any one time. We'll work with our brand team to see what we release and when we release it. So it may not come back as Blazda per se, but you know, it might come back in a different form. Excellent, good stuff. And then we've got um, Gma says, would you ever do anything similar to Kelpie again? So that's going back a couple of years, yeah. maybe four years, five years? Yes, uh, Kelpie, the, the famous Russian oak, the Black Sea oak mm -hmm. cast. Um, again, I think it would be dis disingenuous to do exactly the same again. But, you know, you know as well as I do, mm -hmm. Gillian, that we don't always bottle out everything from no. these experiments. And sometimes we keep a little bit back in our secret warehouse at the distillery, hide it away for a rainy mm. day and see how it appears with a few more years of age on or else we will marry it together with yeah. something else. So again, wouldn't exactly do the same again, but let, let's just say you and I haven't completely forgotten about Russian oak. No, excellent. Yes, it's always worth seeing what yeah. the extra age will do. So Peter Moser wants to know which cigar would you pay <laughs> yes. with Scorch? Okay. So we've already got yeah. a lot of fire going on. Yeah, what yeah. would you? <laughs> yeah, so, so Peter, you know that uh, if it's the right situation, I do enjoy a little cigar. And I think with Scorch, I mean, you, you know I'm a Monte Cristo man and sometimes I'll treat myself to a Cohiba. But I think for something like Scorch, it needs something a bit more full on. And my, my favourite pairings with Ardbeg, I've always been with one of the H. Oopman range. So maybe something like that, and a, a real big spicy Oopman cigar. Lovely. Well, I am not a cigar smoker, so that went completely over my <laughs> head. That was just like, uh, yeah, not quite knowing yeah. that. So any, this is a good one, and I'm waiting with bated breath for your answer. Any ideas what next Ardbeg Day releases? No. <laughs> No, sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm fooling around. Yeah, yes, we, we, we might just be able to give a few clues. Mm -hmm. So, Scorch, mm -hmm. Black, yep. Grooves, mm -hmm. and what, what did we have before Drum. that? Drum. Drum, yes. So, the last four offerings mm -hmm. for Ardbeg Day have been very much driven 
by the maturation mm -hmm. and the different cask types. So without giving too much away, mm -hmm. I can maybe give a little frisson of a suggestion of a hint okay. that for next year's release, um, we're maybe looking a little bit more back into primary production. Okay, excellent. And I, I'm not going to say anything mm. more than that, but you know what I I will say to our Ardbegians out there is that Gillian and I have had great fun <laughs> with Mickey over the years where we have taken over the Ardbeg distillery for a few weeks each mm -hmm. year and carried out some wacky experiments. And you know we're we're going to be seeing the fruits of our labor over the next few years. And next year's release will possibly be the first one in that series. Exactly, Mickey was ever so accommodating and ever so polite with our suggestions. Uh, so and, <laughs> and we know that Sir Colin will be equally, equally. accommodating. <laughs> are, are you hearing that, Sir Colin? <laughs> Excellent, so our final question from Tom Lupo, and he is asking, which has been the most challenging festival bottling from original from original thought to final product. Okay, that, that's a that's really a very, mm -hmm. very good uh, question there. Um, I think perhaps um, the, the most challenging one there possibly was... Um, I'm just trying to think because you know, they're all different in their own ways. Um, you know, the... the the, the Russian oak casks, I was, think, probably... They were brutal. They yeah, were brutal. Ke ke yeah. Kelpy, because, <laughs> you know, we, we had a wide range of them, and some of them were just... There's so much tannin in there. Yeah. And while I quite liked that that kind of almost rubbery, sort of intense flavour in there, we really had to pick and choose the best of them for yeah. Kelpie. So I would say it was probably Kelpie was our biggest challenge. That They're all, I mean, Ardbeg is it's just a challenging result. whiskey. Yeah. And to do something different and bring forth all these wonderful, crazy expressions is a challenge in mm -hmm. itself, but probably Kelpie. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, Gillian, Merlin's beard... <laughs> That's a mighty good Ardbeg, sure to be enjoyed by sovereigns and serfs alike. Scorch is a whiskey for the ages. So thanks to you all for joining us and we cannot wait to see you again for Ardbeg Day in 2022. So, slange. slange.